Welcome back, midnight movie lovers. Did you miss me and my pulp pictures with every fiber of your being? I hope so. There's a storm out tonight, so I decided to stay home and fix my adapter and show you one of my favorite categories of the B-movie genre. Blink and you'll miss them. Tonight, we'll be looking at three completely see-through movies. The Astral Factor, The Amazing Transparent Man, and Eternal Evil. <laughs> Let's get started before the power goes out. Roloflex camera. Snappy wig. This film features Elkie Summer, Stephanie Powers, and Sue Lyon. Who was Lolita in the Stanley Kubrick film? Put that lot together and you pretty much have the Christmas 1976 edition of Bunny Magazine. Now you know the caliber of motion picture we're dealing with. The pretty girls are only too visible and the men... <laughs> As usual, you can see right through them. Let's just hope one shows up in the next clip. Look, blink and you'll miss it. It was a sign. I wonder what it meant. I mean, like, I know it meant this is a high security facility for the criminally insane somewhere in deepest 1970s California, but I mean the sign. What's its deeper, more profound meaning? Does it have a subtext or a nuance? Forget it. Anyway, here's our story. Another lonely night in the cells for inmates of this charming residence. In the Astral Factor, a convicted strangler studying the paranormal form of his jail cell learns how to make himself invisible and pass through walls and so on. Man, that was a bumpy ride. No, I won't be doing that again in a hurry. I've got to cut down on those rich cheeses right before bedtime. What are you looking at? I always get a rick in my neck, too, right after every yeah, cellular doing, recomposition man? sequence, like or even if there's only been a glitch in the space-time continuum. You don't tell me what I did and didn't see. I said it looked like a goddamn mouth. Those are some mighty big words for such a little boy. In fact... You best to be careful these next couple of days, because you're probably gonna fall down. Have an accident. <laughs> you need a dentist in jail. Alright, scenes of trouser soiling terror in the Astral Factor. As books go flying off the shelf and bunks are turned upside down. The horror. The horror! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm being attacked by my bed! Is this guy fending off his mattress? This is amazing. Ah, and a shoe to the face. Take that, and that! Shut up. You say one word about this, one word. And I'll kill you. You understand me? Her. You understand me, Miller? Well, Sarge, I, I'm not so sure what to do. Could you run that by me again? So, off to a promising start. Let's have lots more special effects like that. Here comes the fresh-faced young prison warden. Typical prison wardens. Never around when you need them. And then, one finally shows up. Okay, Miller. That's it. I've had it with you. You're going into isolation for the next two weeks. Sands? Sands, where the hell are you? Don't you think this dude bears more than a here, passing Miller? resemblance to Luke Skywalker? Especially around the earlobes? Sands has used the Force, Luke, and gone through the wall. And so, Midnight Movie Lovers, here we kick in with the greatest special effect of all. Invisibility. All you need, film students, is a slightly shaky handheld camera and maybe a bit of heavy breathing on the soundtrack. And well, you're there. Invisible already. And all the while breathing away like Darth Vader. I have you now, Obi-Wan. 
Not that we want to overplay the resemblance to Star Wars angle too much. In 1976, when this film was made, Star Wars was still just a twinkle in George Lucas's eye. Actually, he made it the following year, 1977. And so, it's apparently straight out of the funny farm and direct to the cemetery he goes. A chance to see some old friends, perhaps? Well, that's a shame. I mean, I prefer this character invisible to his three-dimensional form. Roger? Hello, Mother. What are you doing here? I came back. Why aren't you at school? I came back to see you. Roger, you can't be seen here. I'm throwing a very important party and... No one must know you have a son. Obligatory psychological explanation for the reign of terror that is about to follow as the sick and demented Roger Sands, as played by Frank Ashmore, strangles the five women who testified against him in the trial for his mother's murder. Creepy stuff. You are my mother! Roger, stop it! Stop it, Roger! Hey, what the hell are you doing here? What? I said, what the hell are you doing here? Uh, nothing. I'm not doing anything. Oh, yeah, you vandals are all the same. I know your type. Yeah, that's still cool, though. I mean, in the midnight movie universe, that is still way cooler than being like a shopping mall cop or something. How did you... How did you... No, stop. I'll tell you... I don't know who you are. You're scared. Yeah, that's the evil I throw you in the open grave look. This is undoubtedly why they found the best actor they could for the role. Yep. It's a freshly baked <laughs> loaf of midnight movie gold, this scene. So now, what does the astral traveling escaped Khan with the power to make himself invisible do? Now that he's out of jail, hands up, everyone who thought, bust into girls' apartments and murder them. Well, you'd be right. We've just had the uh, deep psychological explanation for what's coming. Poor little chap was ignored by his mommy. So now, any dame that bears a ballpark resemblance to Mommy Dearest must pay the ultimate price, this sick puppy. Bloody invisible strangler. How dare he strangle Lolita? Nope doesn't really make a lot of sense, but this is just a sexploitation film after all. Pretty girl screaming, that's what it's all about. Yeah, juxtaposition. It heightens the suspense, apparently. Anyway, the curly-haired laughing Muppet with the bad taste in bedroom decor is the hero of this sordid little tale. you ever give up? Lieutenant Barrett. The reluctant this hero, Daisy. anyway. Uh, a renegade cop with a bad day. attitude. So why did you? We have a 187. 187. Is that the code number for women strangled in bathtub? <laughs> Luckily, the renegade cop with a bad attitude is now on the case. The actor is Robert Foxworth, whose finest hour came a few years later on the glossy 1980 soap opera Falcon Crest. It was a bit like Dallas, but with wine instead of oil. Anyway, on the astral factor, we got to hang out with glamorous model actresses like Alka Sommer and make out like a heb cat. <laughs> I've just found out that uh, we're not dealing with some ordinary... I mean, this uh, Roger Sands, he's a... Uh, he's elusive as hell. He's invisible. Until I know more elusive about him, doesn't I need seem all the to really cut it, does it? Get. Well, I'm gonna stay right here, and if you don't like it, you know where you can go. And you might just as well take those bastards out there with you. I want you all of my property. Do you understand that? Do you? Well, I have a slight problem with your Prussian accent. Could you try it again in Bavarian? All right, I'll, I'll give you a choice. Mm -hmm. Either you come with me, or you stay locked in this house until I say it's okay. Oh, I see. You so you're going to hold captive now, too. It, okay? Why don't you stop drinking that crap and grow up? Now, where do you get off telling me how to live my life? <laughs> the way it's going to be, Mrs. Harvey. Or I'll get a court order and 
Haul your ass in. Her ass, huh? The one that hardly fit into those pants. Lousy goddamn police force. Get the hell out of this house. Get the hell out of this house and leave me alone. Get the hell out of this house! Elky Summer. Tragic. Passionate. Legendary. Despite Robert Foxworth's blinding series of 70s safari suits, the Invisible Strangler continues his reign of terror across Los Angeles. He's not someone you would like to run into in a dark alleyway, that's for sure. But that's pretty much what is about to happen any moment now. Wait, is that a black and white roller I see there in the distance? A police car, in other words? Sure is. Could it be that the Invisible Strangler is about to get busted? Nope. But this time, it's a case of auto-possession. Like a repo man with hey, a grudge you. and one unconvincing but lethal special what are you doing power. Back here? It is closed. I work you. Yeah, I'm a stagey. It is Don't still closed. Come on, wait. Tricky. Yeah, I bet that hurt. Still can't figure out why being invisible makes him sound so much like Darth Vader. Hmm. Strong is the force with this one. And print of the movie scratches there are. I get it, I get it. Science fiction meets psychological thriller with Freudian undertones. But why does Roger keep strangling random women? We'll find out when we get back to the climax of the seminal piece of 70s cinema. Welcome back, midnight movie lovers. The powers that be have turned the power back on. Tonight, we've been looking at the metaphysical 70s exploitation flick, variously known as the Invisible Strangler or the Astral Factor. The Strangler in question is an escapee from a mental institution who's able to zap himself from one place to the next without so much as a scientific explanation. But who needs a scientific explanation? Just let the madness wash over you. Now this is much later in the film when the cop, played by Robert Foxworth, thinks he has finally worked out how to lure the Invisible Strangler into a trap. Bring her out. Roger? No, this is Darth Vader. Any other psychotics do you know who come creeping around your house at night? <laughs> to see you. I am your son. You can't hide me anymore. Oh, that's right. This dude mistakes every blonde that he meets for the mother who abandoned him as a child. Take that, you invisible strangler. And I'm gonna keep on shooting even if there are scratches and unexpected jump cuts in the film. Yeah, you tell him. Wow, what a fireworks show. I never wanted to hurt you, Mama. Thank God this came after Star Trek, so we knew how to re-teleport people. Hold up, looks like the universe itself is imploding or folding in or doing something there for a minute that it's not supposed to.
impressed performance by a man in a safari suit reacting to an invisible corpse in a 1970s movie, Robert Foxworth in The Astral Factor. That's all great, but who is the little cookie cutter guy flying into outer space? Is that Roger's soul flying into heaven? <laughs> Probably not. It's time now to look at some early invisible cinema. Let's go back to 1960, to a film entitled The Amazing Transparent Man. The story begins when Joey Faust, a safe-cracking convict, is sprung out of jail. Faust isn't invisible, not yet, just shy of the spotlight. When you have a habit of attracting this kind of attention, it really isn't any wonder. I'd be tempted to avoid the glare of unwelcome attention myself. But the prisoner appears to have made his getaway. Anyway, just who is busting the safe cracker out of the joint and why? The answers may surprise you because they're so darned weird. Joey Faust. I love that name. A weirdo who calls himself the Major wants Joey to steal radium from U.S. Army bases. Why? So he can create an invisible army. Even for a midnight movie, that's a stretch in the vaguely believable plot department. Now, we're conducting experiments requiring fissionable materials. You'll be crew for us. Oh, you'll be well paid. That's atom bomb stuff. The yeah, Buster, that's right. You didn't think this was some run-of-the-mill bank keeper, did you? This plot line has nuclear-level ramifications. You're hardly in a position to bargain, Mr. Faust. A man with a gun doesn't have to bargain. Well, true. I'm certain Julia would disagree with you on that. Early Dirty Harry. You know what one of these bullets will do, son? It'll rip out your spine and roll it up like a ball of skin. So confused by such wise-cracking dialogue and a redneck cop with a double barrel full of buckshot, what choice does our slightly podgy middle-aged anti-hero have but to go along with the scam? A scam which involves a hideous experiment that turns him temporarily invisible. Yep, in all its retro, low-tech glory. But this gear is more powerful than it looks. It's about to make the wise guy here invisible after all. Well, he's off to a brilliant start, except for one small detail, as we're just about to see. What's happened, Zora? His pulse is quite rapid, but that is to be expected. Well, why is he breathing like that? The Vader technique. Faust, can you hear me? Can you speak? Faust, try to sit up. You stop breathing. Well, do something. Oh, Faust. Faust, he's here. You dog. Your power. Power. Now, wait a minute. Hands up who couldn't see that coming. You mean invisible till I want to return it off. So you If I choke you hard enough, you'll bring me back. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. They're showing you how badly you need me. And my loyalty costs money. I told you we'd be well paid. You neglected one thing, chum. How much? A thousand dollars. A thousand every time you do a job. Craner, if I'm going to be hit, I want money. Lots of money. Well, what do you expect? I can't pay that. Oh, yes, you can, Major. I'm sure you can. Shall we talk it over in private? Downstairs? Hmm? Over here, Major. I'm waiting. When is a special effect not a special effect? After you. When it's invisible, that's when. <laughs> the dame with the muha. <laughs> Laugh eventually gets together with Joey Faust, even though he's completely transparent. In fact, maybe even because of that. After all, with Joey Faust, at least you can say that what you see is what you get. Nothing of any substance. You can't get away with this broad daylight, Joey. 
Why don't you stop running Krenner's errands? Let's not get any more involved. Don't get emotional, baby. You're nice as a playmate. Let's keep it that way. Let's understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, they may not see you, but they're bound to see the lead container when you try to get it out. You got it all wrong, honey. Today's the day we take the bank. That's it's funny. The not-so-amazing transparent man didn't seem like the type to let anybody else drive. Least of all, some wisecracking dame. I'll have to climb out. Well, there goes the special effects budget. Oh no, looks like they've still got some left. Security is obviously not as tight as it could be at the Hicksville County Bank. Now primitive, right? But this was way back in the day when there was still something left to steal and when banks had most of their money tied up in cash. Anywho, so far so good. Looks like the transparent Faust has just waltzed right into the high security vault. Well, what do you know? They don't call old Jack Faust money bags for nothing. In fact, they didn't call him old money bags at all. But he does have a handy way with him. In fact, it's like taking candy from a baby. Now that's entertainment. Now you see him, now you don't. Turns out invisibility is a come and go type of deal. Probably that's why the publicity for this film featured the following byline. Said it before on the show, I'll say it again. You really couldn't make it up. What Drive. Drive. The Amazing Transparent Man has one of the strangest happy endings you'll ever see, including a nuclear explosion. Let's flash forward now to 1985, a film entitled Eternal Evil. It's about a TV commercial director who learns the art of astral projection from a mysterious woman. The guy drawing silly pictures is the director of TV commercials Max just mentioned. Kicking back in the office trying to come up with a commercial for dog food. He gets to thinking about what an epic genius he is and how no one appreciates him. Especially his analyst. Ah yes, his analyst. That guy has it coming. Time for a bit of astral travel perhaps. So here we are, in the analyst's office. This is back in perhaps one of the last times in history when men wore bow ties during daylight hours and were, you know, kind of serious about it. Anyway, this guy's main offense isn't his crimes against fashion. Nope. It's that, as an analyst, he told his advertising director patient to, like, get a grip and get real, man. And, uh, he's got it coming, all right. Time to leave work for the day, except for one thing. He can run, but he can't hide from eternal evil. Elevator looks pretty scary. But then he decides he's going to take the stairs. Yeah, staircases. They can be plenty scary too. Especially when you mix in the, uh, the right music. And you uh, shake the lamps frantically overhead. You can all see where this is going, yeah? That's right. It's going downstairs. Yes, but also to a much darker place than any janitor's broom closet. I'm 
almost looks like a chest burster scene from Alien coming up. But no, he dies in agony. But without an alien bursting out of his chest and blood spurting everywhere. Well, that's all the astral projection we have time for this evening. We'll see you again next week on Max's Midnight Movies. <laughs>